so warm good afternoon to everyone so uh, rather i think i should say cheers good afternoon <laughs> because we are going to discuss a topic very interesting but debatable also so before i go to the topic straight away i'll request our uh, guest esteemed guest to kindly come and take the seat on the dais our respected chairman apida mr abhishek dev excise commissioner from uttar pradesh shri adarsh singh ji may i request mr sanjeev vich vice president corporate affairs of diageo india shilpa gupta ji head public policy for nori court india anik khan ji general manager mohan mekins old monk whisky old monk rum <laughs> Mr Ashwin President Wine Growers Association kindly take the seat on the dais please Sharan Assistant General Manager Picardly ab indri se zyada jaane jaate hain Shubhi Mishra she is head agriculture and food drink sector UKIBC We also have other guests and we will be welcoming them also so be we are having the honor to welcome by present bouquet of flowers to our esteemed guests may i request my team members to kindly welcome chairman apida mr abhishek dev a big round of applause ladies and gentlemen we welcome mr adar singh he has come all the way from lucknow excise commissioner uttar pradesh we welcome mr sanjeev vich from diageo india ab godavan ke naam se zyada jane jate hain shilpa gupta head public policy for no record mr rani khan general manager mohan mekins sharan assistant general manager pikadeli Shubhi Mishra on my left. Then we have other guests also. TPCI Chairman, thank you very much for coming and joining. We like my team members to welcome TPCI Chairman. We have friends from Vietnam India Embassy. I would like to welcome our Councillor from Vietnam Embassy. and also i have jagajit industries mr prince gurg would like to welcome him and at the same time we have um, one of the upcoming popular beer brand and non alcoholic beer ishan who's come from goa all the way so well we welcome all of you thank you very much that you have come for this uh, seminar for a topic the topic we have been consuming and it has been in our culture since centuries still we inhabited in talking to it we may be consuming in privately but inhibit shy in talking in public a topic which is there one of the probably the major source of revenue for many of the states but still it is not like to be brought on the forefront a item which is traded most internationally 1.2 billion us dollars and which is growing at a steady pace where india has less than 1% share despite the fact that we are the third largest importer of scotch despite the fact that we have the diverse variety you name it we have it we have whiskey scotch rum gin vodka beer you name it and then we have gi varieties also the variety which has been there centuries culturally and consumed there we have something unique to offer to the world despite this our share is less than 1% so today's we are here to discuss deliberate with the 
industry leaders, with the policy makers, with those who are decision makers. And the, the topic which is flagged is how we can increase our exports, how we can ensure that our exports increase. And that's why we are saying raising the bar. It is not that bar. We are saying the bar of bar chart. We want to increase raising the bar. So ladies and gentlemen, with this, the important topic, and once again, welcoming all of you to this seminar, I have the privilege to invite a person. Now, why I am inviting him the first for the keynote address? Because he is responsible for bringing this to the mainstream. He visualized it. He conceptualized that this is one sector which is probably has not got the kind of attention it required. He realized that this is one sector which is maybe 375 million can easily be brought to 1 billion in the shortest possible time. And he is now focusing it. And he is the one who brought this one of the focus products of Epida. Ladies and gentlemen, I want a big round of applause in welcoming Chairman Epida, Mr. Abhishek Dev. Thank you, Tarunji. And uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, all the distinguished panelists and guests who have graced the occasion, uh, particularly uh, Dr. Adarsh, uh, Excise Commissioner and GST Commissioner, uh, the state of Uttar Pradesh, uh, Shri Sanjeev Vij, Vice President, Corporate Affairs, DRGO, Ms. Shilpa Gupta, Head Public Policy, Panorika. Shri Anik Khan, uh, General Manager, International Rela uh, Relations, Mohan Meekins. Uh, Shri Ashwin Rodriguez, uh, Wine Grower Association uh, President. Ms. Sharon, Assistant General Manager, Piccadilly. And Ms. Uh, Shubhi Mishra, Head Agriculture and Food Drink Sector, UPIBC. So, uh, uh, the topic uh, couldn't have been more uh, apt, raising the bar. So, uh, we can... Uh, um, take different meanings out of it, but uh, uh, our aim is that uh, we increase the exports of the alcoholic uh, beverages from India and take them to the heights. Like Dr. Bajaj has said, that uh, it is a very vast market and uh, we have countries like US, UK, uh, Scotland, all of them are exporting billions of dollars worth of uh, alcoholic beverages and we have a great potential across all product categories and uh, due to all these uh, great potential we thought that uh, we should significantly engage with the ministry of food processing and industry and also with the uh, all our key stakeholders and to work on how to uh, increase the uh, exports of alcoholic beverages from india uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Mohit Singla, uh, TPCI Chairman. Uh, uh, I recall my earlier meetings with him, uh, the earliest meetings. So he had given me the idea that this is a very big sector. And uh, he had prodded me to uh, work on this theme. And uh, today, uh, we have been uh, uh, successful to an extent uh, in taking it forward. Because, as we all know, that uh, uh, Mr. Bajaj also hinted <laughs> that uh, uh, it becomes a taboo subject. Uh, we are, uh, in fact, now going to launch a global campaign for many of our products. And uh, we also uh, wanted that uh, uh, we should also promote the alcoholic <laughs> beverages. Though there is some resistance uh, uh, that, uh, in the ministry that why do you want to uh, promote this, why the government should do it. So uh, we are working on that. If we can have a global campaign on uh, alcoholic beverages also, it will be a, a very good uh, game changer for us. So um, with this, uh, uh, I will just uh, share a very uh, short presentation. Uh, you all know all these uh, statistics. But uh, ultimately, uh, just to uh, set the perspective for the panel discussion, that uh, the global market size is very big. Uh, in terms of exports, uh, 
this figure says uh, 80 billion but uh, we have other data which show, which says that the market is export market is around 113 billion so there are ranges in that so uh, if we see the composition uh, the global market uh, wine beer whiskies vodka rum gin so these are the various categories uh, but in terms of india's exports uh, mostly we have the whiskies uh, which are dominating the exports then we have the beer uh, rum then vodka gin and wine to a very uh, small extent so these are the uh, our our exports uh, they have they have been growing in fact so there is a good jump from uh, 316 million dollars in 22 23 to 375 million dollars in 23 24 so there is a good growth uh, in the uh, exports and uh, just a deep dive into uh, what the world demands and what we are exporting so if you see uh, that uh, in the whiskey category uh most of uh, what we are uh, exporting is in the bulk category or the blended uh, uh, category uh while in the bulk category it is aligned with the global uh, scenario but in the single malt our exports are uh, significantly less so there is a lot of uh, scope to increase over there a uh, beer uh, uh, to an extent we are aligned in that in terms of the exports uh, our share and the global share is uh, almost same but like uh, mr bajaj said uh, that uh, it is again a very growing uh, market we have now a large number of very large number of uh, craft breweries which are coming up in india in goa and all the other places and uh, there is a great potential over there uh, wine is a very uh, niche area for us so mr ashwin is there and he was telling me that uh, it is a challenging story uh, but still uh, since the base is very small if we work on it uh, we will be able to get uh, very good gains in uh, in the short term if we are able to get the things right what the under industry wants so coming to the uh, export destinations uh, where we are exporting so if we uh, previous slide please so uh, the global demand is primarily from the eu us then af Uh, african countries uk canada so if we see in the top two categories of us and eu though they have been uh, notable uh, uh, recent uh, exports uh, indri and we have amrut and all the uh, rampur all these niche brands are now going to us and also to the eu <laughs> but the penetration is very less right now uh africa has a good share of around 9% but uh, our exports are primarily going to africa around 40% of our exports are going to africa so uh while uh, it is a good thing that uh, we have a good market share in africa but uh, at the same time we need to uh, increase our exports in the uh, first two top destinations eu and us apart from that uh, our share uh, if we see is negligible in canada japan china singapore Switzerland Russian Federation all these countries the share is very negligible so in fact uh, uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we don't have the demand uh, our uh, apida team recently went to china so there were uh, there was a very good uh, uh, buzz over there uh, uh, most of you had gone over there and i uh, i was given the feedback that it was a great event and we uh, got very good interest over there uh i went to australia also we have mr lucky there from australia he's a leading importer uh, from australia and uh, uh he himself said that uh, there is a very good uh, demand for the uh, uh indian uh, single malts and indian products in the australian market and uh, that is why i specifically called him uh, to world food and he is doing good business over here and uh, there is a great scope to increase the exports to australia in fact he said that uh, he wanted to connect with uh, piccadilly and all the and all the leading players so i think uh, we will be getting more penetration in the australian market also so premier pre, uh, so what this slide says that uh, there is a need to move to the premier uh, premium uh, segment also uh, right now since most of our exports are to africa uh, so uh, we are not in the premium segment so there is a scope to increase the uh, a uh, premiumization in the whiskey side similarly in gin uh, 
I was just going through uh, once. I was, in fact, uh, it's an anecdote only. So I thought, let's uh, uh, find which are the top uh, uh, gin-producing uh, companies in uh, India. So uh, I found the names. Uh, they're very attractive bottle. I gave uh, her PG a list of around 50 names. To, and he still, I think, has not been able to contact all of them. So. <laughs> Uh, uh, and all of them, uh, were, uh, I think they are very good uh, companies and there is great potential. In fact, I then uh, contacted the Excise Commissioner of Goa also. So we will be working on gin as well. Uh, that itself is a very uh, good segment. Beer, of course, uh, we have the potential. Uh, rum, uh, in fact, uh, Mohan Beacon is there. So uh, rum, in any case, is a good, ma good uh, uh, product. And... Uh, Wine is something which uh, we need to work on, as Mr. Ashwin, I think, in the panel discussion also will uh, throw more light on the issues over there. So, uh, uh, same thing that we need to align our uh, product portfolio with the uh, global trend, uh, except for wine, where the R prices per litre are uh, uh, near the world average, and all the other products, uh, our prices are lower than the uh, world average. So, next. So uh, we studied uh, best practice of one country, uh, which was the United Kingdom. So uh, I go back, please. Go back. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Previous. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's a very good story uh, that uh, UK is working on different aspects strong brand building and heritage storytelling, leveraging their FTAs. They are, in fact, uh, as people from the industry will testify that uh, in the UK FTA negotiations, uh, this is a very big item uh, which they are asking, and they are very aggressive about it, and uh, this is one of the issue which is uh, uh, being left for the last in the negotiation. So it is a, they are uh, negotiating very uh, strongly for this uh, topic. Uh, this uh, product, uh, targeted marketing campaigns, like I said, that uh, there is a need to go for marketing campaigns, strategic glo uh, global partnerships, uh, distributor relationships, uh, hospitality collaboration. This is very important in many markets. Then, of course, uh, sustainability initiatives. Uh, mm -hmm. Ultimately, uh, the Western world now is looking at sustainability and good stories on sustainability, like uh, recently we launched the Godavan, so they have a very good uh, uh, overall story on sustainability aspects, how they are uh, helping the community. Uh, it's weaving in very well with the overall product, and if it, it will definitely add to the demand of the product. And then lastly, but very important, uh, tourism and experience-based marketing. So this is a very important step, uh, very important uh, area where uh, the UK is doing very well. So we definitely know about these uh, tours uh, in the uh, Scotch areas, uh, uh, very well aligned tours. Uh, though, of course, we have some uh, sort of such experiences uh, in, say, uh, uh, Nasik, we have some uh, wineries which are doing these kind of tours. But also in Goa, you have some uh, uh, beer companies which are showing their uh, uh, how it is being produced, and they have experience center. And uh, Paul John also has an excellent uh, experience center over there. So uh, basically, we need to scale up these kind of initiatives in India. So next. So this is basically a SWOT analysis, uh, which uh, uh, yeah. So uh, on the strength side, we have the sufficient availability of raw materials, and there is adequate production capacity. So. That is not an issue. We have the raw material. Uh, there is adequate production capacity. <coughs> In fact, yesterday I was going through uh, the uh, details of the agri-produce of Ladakh. So there they said that there is a good amount of barley is available over there. So that itself is a uh, opportunity. We can uh, uh, maybe uh, set up a niche uh, uh, product uh, line over there, if possible. Uh, Weaknesses, of course, uh, uh, that issue, industry will also say that uh, there is multiplicity of central and uh, uh, central and state levies, basically the state levies. So all the states have their own uh, 
kinds of uh, requirements, norms, which uh, leads to some problems. But we have uh, very progressive states like the example of Uttar Pradesh, Dr. Adarsh is here. So they are taking a lot of initiatives where, we, uh, where uh, uh, the pain points for the industry will be, we are working on reducing them. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, we are getting a lot of support from him. Also, we are getting a lot of support from other governments also, like government of Goa. We'll be engaging with other state governments also to uh, reduce the pain points for the industry. Opportunities, of course, uh, like we have the example of Indian single malt, uh, but then there are other uh, product categories also in all the segments, be it beer, be it uh, wine, be it gin. All over, we have the we have the uh, uh, base. We can expand it. Threats, of course, the brand perception. I said uh, there is need. We need to work on it. Ultimately, unfortunately, like we are exporting more to Africa than that uh, image sometimes built that we are what we are s selling is a, a low value product or it's a low quality product so ultimately premiumization is also very important next so this is the roadmap which we have uh, uh, built upon uh, uh, which is to develop the premium offerings uh, designing differentiated strategy uh, for both the mass market maybe for the african market and for premium markets it could be a different strategy same strategy doesn't work every, always build on the triumphs of the Indian single malt, building bra brand abroad, and uh, identifying country-specific uh, demand, competition, and white space in product offerings. Uh, like in this pr presentation, you will see Crystal is written. So ultimately, so we are working with Crystal. Uh, they have, they are coming up with a strategy for us on the alcoholic beverages sector. Uh, they, they have been working very closely with the industry and uh, in fact we will ask them to int intensify their engagement more with the industry so that we come up with a very good uh, report uh, which lists out all the problems for the uh, of the industry and then that ultimately when it is submitted to the government uh, we will get a, a proper uh, uh, points on which the policy can be worked on. So next. So these are some of the small steps we have taken. These are very small steps, but uh, of course, a beginning is there. So uh, recently, we launched uh, uh, Godavan Single Malt. The global CEO of uh, Diageo, Diageo was there, and she launched it from India. So it was a, a very good event and a very good uh, symbolic uh, uh, flag off also. Uh, we promoted uh, beverages in Fine Food Australia. Uh, the other one, the whiskey night in uh, China, I think is more important. Uh, I think we got a very good traction over there and some of you got the orders also and I hope that we get more orders over there. Uh, ongoing, like in the World Food, we have last year also there was a uh, alcoholic pav uh, pavilion. Uh, in this year's uh, Bharat Food, uh, which uh, TPCI is organizing, there will be a uh, alcohol pavilion over there also. So we will uh, request uh, the industry to participate in that also and we uh, are being we, we will be participating in uh, CR now we uh, sought uh, details of the industry for some events so they have given us one event which is pro wine Dusseldorf so we'll be participating in that we'll be soliciting more names uh, more such events from the industry where we should participate uh, Foodex Japan is also there and the Indus food like, like I said uh, of TPCI is there. Next. So uh, with these words, uh, I think uh, we will uh, um, conclude, I'll com conclude my presentation and uh, we can now have a um, panel discussion on various aspects related to the sector. Uh, uh, I would request Mr. Bajaj to keep it an interactive session. Uh, the panelists uh, can speak on the topics, but if, an aud if the audience also wants to raise some <coughs> issue, uh, they should also be given an opportunity in the end. So thank you. Thank you to everyone uh, for attending this uh, session. I especially thank the counselor from uh, Vietnam who is gracing the occasion. And uh, we will uh, work with you more on how we can collaborate and uh, uh, take the industry forward. I saw your uh, pavilion there in the uh, hall number one. It was a great pavilion. And uh, thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, with your permission, before starting the panel discussion, we have the privilege to have an excise commissioner with us. May I request him to also say opening remarks before we start the panel discussion on this?
thank you so much uh, chairman apida distinguished panelists ladies and gentlemen first of all thank you so much for uh, inviting me here and uh, abhishek has very uh, meticulously and in a detailed manner covered all the aspects related to why we are all sitting here we all want that the export of our products particularly of our food products and which includes alcoholic beverages should increase and uh, alcohol alcoholic beverages occupies a very unique kind of uh, place uh, uh, in our system principally because alcohol happens to be a state subject in our constitution and exports is something that uh, obviously is in the domain of the government of india so i am really grateful that uh, thanks to abhishek uh, we have stopped working in silos that was the first step the state governments and the government of india has to work in cohesion and it was thanks to his initiative in fact uh, to be fair um, uh, my role as the excise commissioner or the role of any excise commissioner in any state is uh, uh, in 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 that role the uh, uh, the portfolio for exports or the time one gives to export is not much it's it's uh, it's 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 not a yeah it's not a focus uh, sector so i think around a month back we had a meeting a first of its kind if i am correct in which uh, we had brought on board a lot of lot of lot of people amongst you and others as well and a number of issues were raised some of which were surprising to us as well because we did not realize that uh, a slight tweak in a policy here or there can lead to such you know uh, such a positive impact uh, to companies who are seeking to export their products outside and i can only assure you that as far as my state is concerned uh, we have uh, come a long way uh, i have no hesitation in saying and with all humility it is the work of uh, the the kind of environment that we are working in and the uh, kind of work that has happened in the past 7 8 years up is one of the topmost states in the country in terms of uh, its uh, uh, its uh, uh, excise uh, environment our revenues are also the highest in the country and uh, we are seeing every year there is a quantum jump of uh, the uh, the the growth rate is between 10 to 15% year on year and uh, i can assure you that we will do everything that we can to ensure that even exports are now uh, uh, this year in fact one of the outcomes of the meeting that we had uh, a month back was in our export policy that we take out every year we will try and incorporate a separate export section as well in the excise policy Uh, because i realized uh, that uh, some issues might be contentious but there are a number of issues in which uh, uh, we can really uh, sit down and have some kind of agreement and uh, sort of uh, streamline and uh, expedite and ease the process of uh, both manufacture and export i would also like to invite uh, uh, all of you to come and explore the opportunities of investing in up because uh, you have the largest market i'm not talking about the export market i'm talking about the domestic market the, uh, i mean so uh, there is still a lot of scope there are a lot of uh, uh, incentives that the state government is uh, is providing under the its uh, industrial policies and uh, we will also uh, facilitate if any one of you is interested in in setting up any kind of plant or any kind of unit in up you are most more than welcome and uh, so i think uh, that's all i have to say thank you so much once again and we'll uh, continue if there are any questions we'll uh, uh, love to answer them in the panel discussion thank you thank you very much sir thank you very much in fact this was my first question to start that whether there is a need to start to have a separate export policy within the excise and you have answered in your introductory remark uh, yes and i think this needs an applause again please it's going to be a revolutionary step as far as exports are concerned mr sanjeev which allow me to begin from you because uh, as i said in the beginning that we are having less than 1% share but we have everything as chairman apida in his presentation mentioned we have raw material we have diversity everything is there so what do you think that are the low hanging opportunities available to us so that we can increase our exports the target we have said is 1 billion 1 one, 1 billion in the 2 3 years time only yeah <coughs> thank you mr bajaj uh, good afternoon everyone yes i think the target is ambitious the target is tough uh, and uh, i think there are hordes of opportunities uh, chairman apida already in his presentation has uh, shown us all of them uh, 
very happy to note that Excise Commissioner UP uh, is, is so positive about introducing a section on exports in the excise policy of UP, which uh, probably the industry would have anyway requested uh, from every excise commissioner in the state. Uh, having said that, I think uh, uh, I would also, you know, appreciate the government uh, uh, here that uh, APIDA along with MOFP, Invest India, have, have formed the first ever committee on the alcoholic beverages and how to work on those exports. So I think uh, it's very encouraging that the government is is now interested in this and they are looking at uh, ways and means in discussions with the industry as to how to how to expand uh, the horizon of exports for alcoholic beverages. Uh, there is a growing demand in the world and there is a growing demand for Indian beverages in the world. I think that's the very first uh, low-hanging fruits. In the last couple of years, the Indian single malls have gone out and established themselves as a brand and I think we need to continue to work on that and continue to uh, to exploit the growing demand. Followed up, you know, we are I think probably today the youngest nation in the world and, and we will remain the youngest nation for quite a time and, and there is a, a, a ever expanding middle class and there is a lot of premiumization activity and this young India is not only limited to India, they travel all over the world. And, and I think uh, they are very, very experimenting. They are very, very, they want new experiences. And, and I think that's another area that the industry and the government need to focus on because we need to continue to offer products which will then, you know, uh, lead to that kind of a consumption, word of mouth, people will travel, the products, the word around the products travel. And, and as it spreads in the Indian diaspora, I think from there it will move down to the uh, other part of the countries. Innovation, I think, is a continuous effort. Um, we at Diageo, you know, recently, as late as 13th of September, uh, launched the Good Craft Company, which is basically nothing but a center where we have the science, the art, and the culture coming together. And, and you know, how do we create uh, good premium brands uh, in that? And, and how do we leverage the Indian uh, craftsmanship and the technology that is available with Indian ingredients and, and create products that we can make for the world, make in India, but make for the world. So I think innovation is the key. Uh, uh, Chairman Saab spoke about Africa. Chairman Saab spoke about all the countries where the exports are happening. Of course, uh, premiumization and the premium category is the focus. But we need to continue to build in the category lower, especially to the African countries, Southeast Asian countries. There are still a lot of opportunities there. We are strong. We need to continue to build on our strengths. Uh, leveraging FTAs. How do we leverage FTAs? We, uh, I mean, uh, Chairman Saab again spoke about how UK was leveraging FTA. But then which are those countries with whom we should be looking for FTAs and how best we can leverage those FTAs for increasing the uh, alcoholic beverages export. I think these are some of the things. And, and last, I think, but not the least, the, the startup culture that we have now we are seeing in this sector, uh, especially in Goa and all these places. And, how do we do? Uh, you, sir, spoke about gin. Uh, craftsmanship, gin, Indian craft gin is something which I think needs to be targeted. We at Diageo, we continue to invest minority stakes in these startups to support them. And, and I think uh, the startup culture uh, needs to be promoted in this sector. It is something which the government is supporting in general. But I think this sector needs uh, this, uh, a lot of support here. And that's where I think I would urge uh, every excise commissioner, including the excise commissioner of UP, that that is where the excise policies need to become a little bit more tunable, a little bit more tailor-made to, to support the startup culture. Achha, humne excise ko to kar di, excise has shown us positiveness. So I think let's come to the specific point. Shilpa, you think which are the geographies or the products we should focus? Do you think we should continue to focus Africa, the Asia, or we have more markets in the West to concentrate on this? It's too specific, geographies and the products. Sure. So uh, allow me to explain 
both points but with specifics and examples now uh, companies like panorica we have products of all the ranges for masses to the premium similarly diageo similarly other companies indian manufacturer today is invested in all categories all slabs and is available to serve the globe the point is when you talk about africa and asia uh, as an as an market you need to give a strong export base to the uh, i would say um, the starting segment the beginning uh, segment where uh, i might quote blender's pride imperial blue royal stag these kind of brands which are very very capable of being exported and consuming the middle age uh, middle uh, income dispensable income group in asia and africa which is ever increasing at the same time when i look at uk us or the premium maturer if not premium i'll i'll correct myself maturer markets of consumption uh, uh, we have indian single malls it's a beautiful beautiful story the demand the liquid is gold uh, in our terminology the way indian manufacturers are creating indian single malt uh, l77 for me is uh, like a love letter to india you know the bottle has the map of india longitude 77 is the longitude our address where india is it's north to south that is what longitude is uh, and it has the flavors and the taste of all so that is a love letter to india so it goes to us it it's already available in dubai we are thriving to make it global i mean brands are present our brands are present in more than 55 countries uh, just to so you uh, think uh, uh, besides these markets we have to look for those oh yes. premium markets as well oh yes. but we cannot afford to neglect these markets absolutely. as well sharan absolutely indri has given a success story it has been a success story as far as single malt is concerned but there are other success stories also so how do you think we can what are the takeaways of these success stories and how we can build upon to have a better better our presence in the international market i think in the past few years the indian single malls have done phenomenally well in the global markets you know uh there are so many brands that have come out in the past two years itself and each and every single malt has been really appreciated yes for the single malt space when we start looking out for exports we do mainly look out to the premium markets you know uh, as ma'am mentioned we do look out to us and uk first because yes they are the mature markets they understand the product they appreciate the liquid and the quality from where it's coming but having said that i think there's a huge scope in certain other markets that uh, we've not spoken of till yet or we usually kind of remains in the background say for instance uh, the scandinavian markets eastern europe china where we just recently went and especially south america now so all these markets i think are largely unexplored by indian uh, by all indian companies and i think they also have a huge potential to absorb quality premium products you know the scotch the american single malts have already made their ways over there and they only know about those as of now so i think those are the markets that we should be next focusing on you know and the government here especially the government's role would come into play because these are the regions that you know there's a huge language difficulty they're very far flung difficult to reach uh there uh, it's difficult to find good importers over there so i think this is a place where a uh, government can really support in uh not just increasing but see even to giving a platform to you know uh, all indian alcohol companies to start a journey somewhere good one so that's why you think now we have a high hope when we we can our place our brands in the international markets yes, this success definitely. stories have given us quite encouragement before i come to wine allow me to come to gin chairman apida in his presentation also mentioned about gin and it is growing 6 to 7% internationally and uh, the the general growth is 0.8% but gin itself is growing 6 to 7% and many and many new brands are coming india has now various brands of gin which is coming anik ji aap bataiye 
what needs to be done to place our gene brands in the international market and take advantage of this upcoming feature which is coming up yeah it's, uh, it's Sorry, so as uh, Chairman Sir has rightly mentioned that gin is the segment where, I mean, we, the growth which we have seen in the presentation, it is six to seven percent. In India, is still it's a very niche segment. It is growing and uh, over uh, Past few years, we have seen a surge in the <coughs> local Indian brands of gin, very good brands. So, so that is the area where we can focus and we can leverage those, these Indian brands. We can take these brands to the international market. As Apeda has provided a platform for all of us in China, similar platforms can be provided as Sharon has mentioned about Indian single malts, which are getting popular. Similar way, Indian gins can also be popular. It is already in India and globally also the gin market is growing, growing very fast. India also cocktail culture is growing. We see uh, cocktail festivals every year in all metropolitan cities. Youngsters are uh, getting into the cocktail cultures, cocktail bars, gin festivals happening in India, in all the co cosmopolitan cities. So these all uh, pl uh, platforms, these are providing platforms to all the Indian brands to experiment, to launch new variants. And before going into the global markets, we can innovate, we can test the market in India, and uh, people in India are uh, very well aware about the gin now. So, and the gin, uh, basically, it has, I mean, India can take a lever leverage, uh, because botanicals, main ingredients, botanicals. India is a home for indigenous botanicals. In everyday life, we use these botanicals, turmeric, ginger, lemongrass, so many more. And it gives a unique flavor, unique flavor to the gin. And uh, international consumers also look for these unique flavors, experiences. So it, it provides us a great uh, opportunity to provide the Indian experience. Of course, the storytelling has to be the rich heritage of India has to be told to the consumer, to the global consumers and yes we get the if we get the platform like apeda has provided in china similar if we go to the different parts of the world yeah jin the, is the next thing which is growing and which is growing very fast yeah yeah then thank you very much in fact uh, just for information of our audience you know there are few jin brands also which have been um, placed in our hall number uh, four upstairs, if you go, you can see, and they are using Indian botanicals, and they are very good ones. Do also if, if for, for example, I'm representing Mohan Mikin, UP-based, uh, and uh, if I do not talk about our flagship brand, Old Monk will not be a justice. So as we are discussing export, so, so this is the Indian brand which we are exporting to, I think, more than 50 countries. And we have all the support from Commissioner Saab in UP because we are based in UP. And uh, yes, that is the flagship brand, but we have recently launched Craft Gin, which is Jamun. And uh, we have launched other uh, gin as well. And as I mentioned, the botanicals. So we are using local botanicals from Himachal. So which is giving it a unique flavor, a unique character to the gins. So that is how the other companies also doing. They are, un they are using native uh, ingredients, native uh, uh, botanicals. So these are the things, uh, uh, Hapusa and uh, greater, than, greater than, 
these are the very good uh, gin brands and also there are many brands from goa so i mean we need to in a coordinated efforts and a combined efforts we need to promote uh, gin also so yeah thank you very much jamun of course it is a very good gin uh, permit me to come to wine मुझे याद है जब हम लोग वाइन के लिए काम कर रहे थे तो तब अश्विन हमको ये कहा गया कि इंडिया में वाइन नहीं चलने वाली दे आर विस्की ड्रिंकर्स और वाइन तो उनको समझ नहीं आएगी बट येस वेन वी स्टार्टेड वर्किंग इट स्टार्टेड गिविंग रिजल्ट बोथ डोमेस्टिकली एंड ऑल्सो इन द इंटरनेशनल मार्केट बट नाओ आई डोंट नो यू हैव टू करेक्ट मी लाइक मी देर आर परसेप्शन ऑफ मेनी अदर्स दैट वी आर गेटिंग अ फील दैट वी आर रीचिंग टू अ स्टेगनेटेड लेवल growth new players are limited players are not coming the growth is not seen or the enthusiasm from the wine industry is not that perceived on this am i right you correct me and if i am right then why this is happening yes firstly sir i don't remember when i said that <laughs> but many people do say this that yes india mein wine nahi chalne wali you know and i completely disagree because i am the torch bearer of uh, of indian wine uh before i can answer your question just a quick background but why wine is a unique beverage number one wine gives the highest realization to the farmer you know because it's made from fruits versus grain and fruits you know, cost more uh, more expensive than than grain that's number one so farmer friendly beverage number two uh rural development and 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 wine tourism you know wineries are normally located in rural areas you know developed in rural areas and wine tourism is a billion dollar industry the world wide as in the world as we know it number 3 wine is less harmful for health so these three reasons wine has been given preferred treatment uh, in in wine producing countries like in europe america etc um however come to cut to india it is a very different story uh, most wineries 9 out of 10 wineries are struggling uh you know as you said not just stagnating but struggling closing down closing down even in in states like like maharashtra while in in third state of up new wineries are opening up and i you know and sad to say that they will soon face the challenges that that we face if if the corrections are not made so coming to your you know to uh, to your question is 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 why is is wine stagnating and why is it become just 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 two or three players and then and, and the rest has has not uh, you know yeah, uh, are struggling the single reason is the largest reason is over regulation uh, as we know you know every, every state has has their own regulations uh, some states are more friendly than others but on the whole it uh, a small entrepreneur small to medium size just gets exhausted by the time he reaches the market because of all the labyrinth of of regulations this sitting outside offices of you know of, of the authorities and it 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 becomes uh, very very difficult finally uh, you know to reach the consumer not to mention limited availability because of limited outlets retailers demand uh, uh, dictate terms so there are these structural changes that 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 need to happen once we now these are not difficult and more so when when i hear you know uh, uh, honorable excise commissioner is talking in this language i can see that the change is is i can see the light at the end of the tunnel they can happen and once we we develop number one is vibrancy in the industry that is many many players small medium uh, and 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 large players we develop many many players making different types of wines not just when we talk about wine what's the first thing? you know you think oh 800 rupees and 900 rupees wine that no wine is has a huge range right from 100 rupees where you can have wine based beverages just like beers uh, beer beverages which can be you can make uh, out of fruit you can which every indian state has you can make out of honey which every st- single state has which you can sell millions and millions of cases of to your uh, little low cost red white wines 300 400 rupees to premium wines 800 1000 rupees to super premium wines of 5000 rupees right where you know the the, the single malts so wine has this huge scale which that will be opened up uh, so the, so the vibrancy and then we'll have scale scale of the industry develop our local competence and then we confidently go abroad through uh, th- through through your help in a- in apida and and make a name for us in india
तो वो अब आपको तो बता दिया कमिश्नर साहब ने कि दे आर गोइंग टू रिलैक्स नॉर्म्स फॉर एक्सपोर्ट्स आर कंसर्न एंड वी आर ओनली डिस्कसिंग एक्सपोर्ट्स हेयर वी आर नॉट डिस्कसिंग डोमेस्टिक मार्केट एपिटाइज देयर कमिश एक्साइज कमिश्नर्स आर देयर सो लेट्स लुक फॉर प्रमोटिंग आवर वाइन मोर एंड मोर टू दिस शुभी चेयरमैन एपिटाइन इज प्रेजेंटेशन गेव के स्टडी ऑफ यू के एंड यू आर रिप्रजेंटिंग द चैम्बर टेल मी वन थिंग how indian brands are presently perceived internationally and how we can do what should be done to build our brand image internationally uh so uh indeed yes indian brands i'll just give a small anecdote before starting this recently i was sitting over dinner with the chilean trade commissioner to india he just joined indian office and came from london his first task was can i get sula wine here so imagine a chilean guy sitting in london was drinking sula uh this is the kind of perception <laughs> uh which indian labels have created for themselves globally uh godavan getting an award in uk it's such an emotional story uh diageo a uk headquartered company shipping their goods to uk and getting an award in uk so we are treading on the right path is what i will say uh and when apida sets their mind on something i have always seen success stories coming in so uh that is something i am very confident of participating at trade shows uh reflecting on the brand images is the right way forward continued message to your target audience and what they are seeking is what i will say will be the key to success uh, in markets abroad thank you very much so we have the opportunity and let's in cash on it i think we are now on the right track you are saying so sir coming back to you um, बार बार आपका थैंक यू बोल रहे हैं सर यू हैव मैंशन के वी आर नाउ गोइंग टू टेक अ डिफरेंट स्टैंड एज फर एज एक्सपोर्ट्स आर कंसर्न बट कमिंग टू दिस दैट नाउ वैल्यू एडिशन वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग वैल्यू एडिशन एंड एवरी प्लेटफॉर्म इट इज सेट दैट इंडिया इज एक्सपोर्टिंग प्राइमरली कमोडिटीज एंड वी हैव टू नाउ लुक फॉर वैल्यू एडिशन इससे अच्छा एग्जाम्पल नहीं है थर्टी रुपीज आइटम इज सोल्ड एट थ्री थाउजेंड रुपीज this cannot be the best case study of a value addition so what needs to be done to encourage more investment more players to come up more uh, industries to develop and more and more domestic and internationally they come and invest in india what needs to be done sir yeah so uh, one of the things that uh, uh, was mentioned by one of the panelists as well is that we uh, for right or for wrong this sector uh, has, sees a lot of regulations because as i said again it's a state subject so um, uh, we need to really uh, ensure that as far as possible the processes become online and not uh, i mean becoming online is just uh, the first step i i do realize that even after most of the processes have become online uh, it's still a task to get the approvals and all the permits and we are working towards that so we really are quite determined to ensure that uh, a new player a startup if if we try if uh, if they try and establish something we will uh, ensure that their sort of journey is is, is a pleasant one and um, so th that is uh, number one that we really need to look uh, to ensure that all our processes and all our steps are streamlined they um, uh, they facilitate the entry of all kinds of people even e even newbies number 2 as has been rightly pointed out <coughs> we need to sort of promote our own uh, indigenous kind of culture and our own ecosystem one of the uh, i am surprised the name has not been taken but uh, apart from um, indri and godavan uh, and old monk obviously up uh, would i believe we one of the very few uh, states uh, in the country if not the only state in the country where in the uh, field of alcoholic beverages uh, one the, uh, the the one of the most famous beverages is known by the name of a city which is rampur so um, uh, and they have uh, uh, very uh, nicely and very clever, cleverly leveraged uh, that kind of advantage which they have built over the, over the past several years uh, they are also diversifying and there are uh, other other players as well old monk is obviously uh, one of them 
so we really need to do that a few states have brought out a separate heritage uh, liquor policy for example rajasthan has done that madhya pradesh has done that again they have tried to leverage the uh, the local culture and the uh, local liquor that is manufactured there and they have provided that a platform gin is obviously something that uh, we already doing we read about that and we l- listen to abhishek talk about that so that is again something that we uh, need to focus on and lastly i think um, as i said um, if i if i I'll, i'll come back to up because i represent up uh, there is a lot of scope and potential in our state and um, i would again like to invite all of you to please please come forth there are small ecosystems which are present it's 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 actually a universe it's, it's not a state it's a universe so you'll find all kinds of products uh, as uh, i think uh, uh, ashwin right you pointed out we we have a lot of uh, wineries which are emerging in up and in our last year's policy we had a very small section about trying to promote alcohol alcohol tourism in our uh, uh, breweries and in our wineries we'll we'll try and uh, make it more streamlined this year so to uh, so that uh, some of the taboos that are associated with it are uh, slowly removed so yes there is a lot of scope and uh, we in the government uh, need to ensure that we put uh, we we go the extra mile to ensure that players can come in and uh, together i think we can make it work thank you thank you sir you also rightly said that we have to use the cultural aspect the peculiarity of the area to even build a brand image of this uh, we have from jagajit industries mr prince garg uh, okay um, he'll come back i think he's gone there one you talking startups and we have a one beer uh, startup with us they start from goa ishan to you we word over that export item 50% is beer export over in our basket 20% is beer a lot of huge scope is there so what do you think in short what do you think needs to be done to increase our beer export so um uh, good afternoon everyone so uh, yeah as you rightly said i think india uh, is a little bit behind uh, in terms of beer exports and i think uh, one of the main reasons is the way uh, and the nature in which beer is perceived it's uh, always been sort of uh, people have always been sticky with the origin of where the beer comes from to sort of understand the premium how premium the beer is if it's german it's the most premium if it's belgian it's the next if it's american it's experimental and that's always how it's been sort of perceived but you know that is what needs to sort of slowly change and you know we as a startup brand have been making a lot of effort to sort of see how that works if we do not go out there and put ourselves out there with people you know um we are one of the few craft breweries that exports a lot of our beer to US and Canada and uh, you know we are available in 10 plus states and the way we did that was by changing that perception one step at a time and that was by taking part in trade shows where we actually made them try the beer because when they first hear that it's an indian beer they automatically assume that it's probably not the best but the only time they realize that it is is when they get to taste a taste, taste a sip of it so i think one way we can really really boost indian uh, export of beer is by putting out craft beer like ours and other brands out there and making people try it and making them realize that you know today quality product is coming from india as well and i think india has such amazing ingredients that come from across the, across the country that if we leverage that that also adds a lot of value like we have one beer we we use wild organic honey from the himalayas from jim corbett national park and you know that add so much such a huge usp you know today that's actually our top selling beer in the us and primarily because we use that wild organic honey coming from uh, jim corbett national park so these are the sort of leveraging points that we need to use and push our product out there and make people try to realize what the value is um but there are certain problem areas that we face which also makes it a little challenging and um as but as it was rightly said that you know ingredients are very easily available when it comes to uh, manufacturing alcohol but when it comes to uh, uh craft beer there are certain ingredients that are just not available in india right hops being one of the major ingredients which is just not cultivated in india and it takes a long time to create a a, a hop cultivation and start it out in a new country right so i think countries like japan uh us canada have invested a lot of money and time in in creating their local uh, hop plantations which i think india 
up in the north has the possibility to do so. So I think investment in that area, as well as the, the uh, cultivation of two-row barley, which is very, very important for uh, uh, making beer. If investments are done in that side and, and, and efforts are put there, it'll make it much cheaper to make craft beer in India. Right now, even though commercial beer is competitive in the global landscape, craft beer is not. And you know, we have seen that happen, you know, American, Craft breweries and European craft breweries are being able to offer much more competitive rates than Indian craft breweries. One is because of uh, the fact that we have to import uh, a lot of our raw material. And plus two is the point that Indian craft breweries are not being able to uh, get the economies of scale that they need to get because our markets and our target audience is dispersed across the country. And being uh, segmented out into different states, breweries like us uh, require a lot of time to reach all of those markets, right? So that today to get to uh, a market like Bombay, Hyderabad, Bangalore, Delhi, Calcutta, Lucknow, all of these places requires us being registered in all of these XI states, which is probably going to take a startup like us maybe five, six, seven years to get to. By, by that time, the economy of skills kick in. So, so to get the pride competition, we have to be able to get access to that market. So these are the few factors I think if you work on, I think India has tremendous potential in becoming a powerhouse in exporting craft beer. Thank you. Thank you, Ishan. And you have given me idea of asking the industry leader this point. Because we say we have all the raw materials to grow. But uh, you mentioned and that when we actually start production, we realize no, one item is missing or we don't have or we, we do not have nearby where our plant. We have one industry leader, a success story of Godavan. He started from barley. Let's hear them. How, what can be done to see that all the ingredients, the raw materials are easily available to the uh, manufacturers? Well, uh, Bajaj sahab, let me first qualify that I am neither an agricultural expert nor a technical expert. But still, I think with, with whatever knowledge I have with the experts within my organization, uh, what I uh, strongly feel is that uh, we, need to, we need to really step up uh, the barley production with the farmers, build the supply chains, and and the kind of barley that is required for distilleries and breweries to create premium uh, Indian craft whiskies or premium craft beers. Because uh, I think still a lot of barley gets imported into India, despite that. Uh, the farmers are really not uh, that tuned to growing barley. Uh, and Number two, I think the supply chains are really not existing. And this is where I think government and APIDA and MOFP, uh, I think uh, we would look up to them to reach out to the government and, and collaborate. Because I think a lot of work needs to be done, not only in terms of, uh, you know, what uh, is the requirement for the industry, but I think a lot of work needs to be done on the research. because. What is probably growing in South Africa may not grow, or South America may not grow in India, or the farmers may not find it very productive to grow in India. So, so we need to find the right type of barley that meets with the quality requirements of the distillers and the brewers. Uh, it works, the, it brings the economies for the farmers, because the yields per hectare have to be there for the farmers to make money out of it. Only then they will be incentivized to move out of their current crop and start uh, planting barley and start selling it. And number three, the, the supply chains from the farm to the distilleries needs to be built up. Similarly, for some of the other grains, I think uh, we need to do a similar kind of research work. So I think it requires a lot of coordination, government support, uh, research support, uh, the investment from the industry, and of course, uh, how best we can encourage the farmers and make it a strong livelihood for them. Thank you very much. Let me permit me to come to the specific issue which has been flagged most of the times by the industry is labeling. Shilpa ji, how do you think labeling is, first of all, is it an issue? If so, how big is an issue? Then what remedy you think is available? So, uh, the moment you said labeling, both of us smiled. The reason is, it is an issue. That's why we smile. But even before coming to labeling, just continuing where Sanjeev left on barley, because I, I thought I must uh, inform the audience and the panel here. 
so our re recent commitment in, in Maharashtra, you must all have read the newspaper, we are committed to procure 50,000 tons barley per annum from Bitaburi, Nagpur. Right? And we are, how, how did we manage to do that? Of course, the scale is big. Uh, also is the work that we've done with the community. That's the farmer community around. The work of telling them how barley is a new cash crop for that region. One, also educating them on the climatic conditions, the soil types. And that education has traveled across the district. And now I, I will not be wrong in saying that we'll be touching the lives of 90,000 farmers every year. So I think that's the work from industry side we can do. But at the same time, I, I really agree, appreciate the pain points that you've highlighted and the stress that Sanjeev has given, that there is a collaboration needed uh, from the government where in investments are ready to come from industry. But uh, uh, a strong bond is needed. So that was on barley. Now coming back to labels. Yes, labels is very, very critical. Because um, in India, it's a dark market. I cannot communicate anything to my consumer. We cannot advertise. We cannot market. The only way I can communicate first in domestic market to my consumer is through my label or my packaging. That's all, right? So label has to be clean. But the requirements on my labels, state-wise, is so diverse so enriching uh, and that, you know, it becomes very difficult to even read the brand name sometimes. It is so much of information there. So we would like to restrict this to, let's come to the international. Yes. So the same thing is applicable to the, uh, I mean, you pick up a UK brand for UK market and pick up an Indian brand for UK market. The label is not competitive to each other in the look of it, in the design of it, because there is so much of uh, mnemonics that is needed other than what the brand is, which is not relevant for global consumer. So I think small tweaks here and there can help that those logos, those brand names, those visible marketing uh, um, layout can be as competitive as the global consumer want. Actually, if you, wine particularly, champagnes, you know, if I go further in the premium category, the look is very, very important. The positioning of the brand is very, very important. The positioning is diluted because I have to write Madira Pina Hani Karak Hai. International ke liye toh force karte na aapko. Sir, kahin kahin jaga karte na, sir. Yeah, even now we are, as we have a commissioner himself is committed that they are going to revise whatever is the for external uh, export. Yeah, yeah, Sanjeev ji. Shortly, because I have to cover it. Yeah. What I will add here is that uh, we have a lot of importers sitting here in this room. They are our customers. They are the ones who buy. So, so I think labeling is from an export perspective is best understood from them. Yes. What do they need in the country where they're going to import the goods? And, and then I think if we can create a policy which can be advised to the states that whenever there is a labeling requirement for exports, exports. this is the norms that we can follow. I think this is where APIDA and MOFP can do a great uh, service. I think we need to talk to the importers. Uh, so let's take this as yeah. a first takeaway. Absolutely. No, no, I'm just saying, I'm concluding. Just first takeaway on this. Let industry give us a write up to Chairman Napida that what do you need as far as label is concerned? What do you need? What is your ask? I am talking again from export point of view. Please don't confuse with between the states. This is not our domain. I'm talking from exports point of view. What is your ask? Please give us in this, this, this what you want. And then we have. Uh, excise commissioner up then others also we can take these issues monday, I'm monday morning on your table sir <laughs> sharon come be because i have to take care of the time also sharon 10 percent of uk's exports is single malt we have success stories of single malt indri godavan rampur and that longitude we have now success stories of this so how do you think now we can build 
our international market of single malt whiskey so like you mentioned uh, the uk for the uk one of the biggest industry is the scotch industry which is highly supported by the government and also protected by the government you know they have their associations in place which have their norms and regulations which protect the manufacturers for the products so not everybody can not anybody can get up make a whiskey and call it a single malt because there are very strict regulations in place which protects them and which helps them to promote the uh, product globally as well i think over there uh, for us we don't have that association in place as of now we've just recently created an association which uh, a lot of the brands here now are a part of but it will take some time for that association also to put everything into place yes with the help of the government so i think indian single malt is getting recognized especially in the past few years at a phenomenal level you know uh, earlier in the world the categories were only scotch single malt american single malt irish or english single malt or it all came under world single malt but now the indian single malt is getting recognized as a category itself so that is a huge recognition that is coming to us and i think to carry that forward and to build on that uh we need to be very conscious about our quality because the quality of your liquid is what is going to sustain you in a longer period of time you know any new brand doing a launch and everything is great it's there in the market the hype is there but what is going to carry you through is the quality of your liquid and innovation in that so we've always been harping on quality and innovation and i think that is what will drive the industry forward along with a set along with an association that protects the manufacturers that protects the manufacturers and gives them a platform to further take it ahead thank you you have given me very important clue of quality and consistency innovation and In also innovation innovation of course is there but i am with this i am coming back to the wine now <laughs> you see quality and consistency is buzzword for wine also how do we stand as far as india is concerned are we keeping our commitment to quality and are we consistent in our quality in wines india has made huge strides in the last i'll say just 5 years um the quality has uh, has achieved a quantum leap and indian wines are now um, consistently winning awards at international wine competitions that said as an industry we have a long way to go now the good news is that we as an association are getting tremendous support from from the government right from number one is epida you know who actually they approach us we don't have to approach them you know of uh, taking part in in the international exhibitions number one you know for exposure number two capacity building so they are they are calling us baba when are you going to do uh, we are actually lagging behind honestly when i when i going to the, cap, the 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 capacity building sessions you know for our quality for for viticulture for wine making uh, and and for marketing we have entered into an mou with uh, national research center for grapes in in pune for the first time uh, research will be uh, conducted on wine grapes in india through an ex um, an extensive uh, program um we have uh, conducted uh, work a workshop with with fssci uh, to, to make our Uh, our members understand what are the standards required uh, for for wine uh mofi has has uh, in in principle uh, is is open to having a wine analysis laboratory in our wine producing country is is to is is to fund a laboratory in in wine producing areas uh, in in india like uh, nasik so in other words we we are on the way we we are, we are getting a lot of support from the government and uh, i see that in in a small in a in a short time you will see that that indian wines will start making uh, you know better and better uh, uh, inroads or higher in inroads internationally as well uh, supported by our government good thank you very much you said it let me come back to because uh, uk fta how do you think ftas yeah they are very important tool so ftas are going to help us in getting more market access and what you are on the other side of the negotiation you 
advice you want to give it to, suggestions you want to give it to the government that yes, or to an li organization like APIDA, yes, this needs to be done to get better leverage of the FTAs. Uh, so FTA no doubt is a great tool for business confidence building exercise. We as UKIBC have made extensive submissions not only to the Indian government but also to the UK government. So we have played a bilateral role or two-way role in that particular aspect. If I talk particularly for uh, say a sector like alcoholic beverages, Vijasab, then what I will say is that uh, ease of doing business is something which plays a great role in, uh, in advancing uh, uh, messages of this nature. Uh, then uh, making sure that we study the market we intend to venture into, knowing what your consumer base in that particular market is looking for. That uh, prelim exercise is something that helps a lot. So uh, I'll just give an example that we did this extensive study before uh, reaching out to the governments on both the side, identifying that the UK businesses are exporting about 95% of their support is towards the Make in India campaign. They are uh, importing a lot of bulk scotch to value add that in country and then further either sell it to the Indian consumers or export it out. So narratives of that nature need to be identified uh, given the partner country you are having a dialogue with. Aligning yourself to the standards, international standards is also very helpful because when we talk about a small businesses, it is very difficult for them to reinvent themselves subject to the export market or subject to the domestic market. So if we have unified standards, that helps us take that advantageous leap like uh, never before. So those will be my two things. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving us these tips. Uh, May I come back to, sir, up to you. Would you like to give, you have heard everyone. Now, you have heard more than I think they have conveyed in a free and frank manner also. So just a few closing remarks from you. Yeah, so uh, what I've come to realize is that we need more such interactions because uh, we, uh, in the states really need to understand what are the kind of uh, labeling provisions, what are the kind of administrative uh, details that is required when you export a product to a particular country. <coughs> and uh, trust me, and I can say that with full confidence, not just about my state, for any other state. Who, who wouldn't want the product from a particular state to be exported? It is just, I think, a question of sitting down together and uh, uh, chalking out the final details. and. We are more than willing to uh, take your concerns into um, uh, consideration. I can assure you that much. So we need more, su more such interactions because uh, this is something that is an evolving field. This might not have been true five years ago. Nobody was talking about exports. So y y our policies also need to um, uh, keep on uh, updating themselves. And, and in fact, that is, the, uh, that is the very reason why we have an annual policy. And that is the very reason why we have a very democratic process wherein we take the feedback from all stakeholders. It goes through several levels before it is being finally approved at the, uh, by the government. So this process will start, uh, I think, uh, by, the, by November it will start, by October, November it will start. So I will more than welcome all of you to come and uh, keep pestering us to ensure that uh, um, uh, at least some of your concerns which uh, uh, I mean, uh, which uh, don't run counter to our sort of um, uh, regulations. They are incorporated. So thank you. Sir, thank you. So आपका करना है इतनी बड़ी बात आपने कह दी. Thanks to you. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we had a very good and meaningful discussions on this. Of course, we will continue to have as. Uh, Excise Commissioner has mentioned that we need more and more such interactions to know the industries, to know the issues involved and to address it also. And uh, as I said, this initiative has been taken by Chairman Apida. So I would take the advantage to request Chairman Apida to give his closing remarks. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you, Tarunji, and uh, also to, uh, firstly, the distinguished panelists, uh, Adarsh, and uh, okay, this, is, this is something, a surprise item. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, so uh, distinguished panelists, Dr. Adarsh, uh, for sparing his time uh, for this session. He's a very positive officer. I requested him three days back, and he straight away said yes uh, to attend this uh, event and also to all the distinguished panelists who have come from all across uh, the country uh, 
Ashwin has come from uh, Maharashtra and all the other panelists who have come from so, uh, so many different places. To all the esteemed uh, uh, stakeholders, uh, the audience, uh, honorable counselor from uh, Vietnam and uh, our importers, everyone who has uh, very patiently listened to uh, the today's session. Uh, my apologies, I think the uh, uh, size of this room is a bit small. I think Mofi didn't anticipate the excitement uh, which we'll generate in this room <laughs> and the extent of audience yesterday. Many are standing outside. Many are standing outside. Yesterday we had a, a, a session and initially uh, we were having trouble in filling up the place, but after that uh, it became a full house. But here it became a full house in the first uh, instance itself. So <laughs> there is a lot of excitement uh, over here and uh, uh, definitely from uh, APIDA side, we will be working on more such initiatives to promote the industry abroad. And uh, we will be, uh, uh, like I said, uh, we have brought in UP with us. Uh, very soon we will be having uh, more uh, stakeholder governments uh, with us uh, to listen to all our uh, issues. And uh, we have now a plan to also uh, 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 seek the convenience of the senior officers from the state departments if they can participate in the international shows. And uh, I'm very pleased to say that Dr. Adarsh has consented yes, to uh, <laughs> travel with us to Seattle and also to Provine. Uh, and uh, we will be uh, 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 having more such uh, forward-looking officers to participate with us so that they also get an idea of the uh, international scenario. Because uh, seriously speaking, I also don't know uh, the issues. Like you said, the uh, labeling issues, a UK bottle is there, the same bottle of another company. So if we visually see that, and uh, then we uh, have an impact more than what is being said. Uh, so that is there, and uh, we uh, had very good uh, launches recently. We entered in, uh, we had a interaction in China. Uh, uh, our, esteemed counselor is there from Vietnam, we can have a discussion with him uh, post this uh, session of how we can uh, collaborate with uh, them and to increase for mutual benefit for both the countries. And also, uh, we would like to support and showcase Indian GI products abroad. Uh, Hatpri ji was telling me that uh, uh, we will be flagging of uh, consignment of Feni to UK very soon, so, the, so to USA. So that itself is a very uh, great step. Uh, we would like to showcase more of our GI products abroad and uh, we would like to promote startups. Uh, we have a large, uh, a very good number of uh, players who are joining in and from APIDA side, uh, let me assure you that we are always on your side and we will uh, work with all the stakeholders so that the sector becomes more vibrant and uh, it is for the benefit of everyone like Mr. Bajaj said that it is a live example of how the value addition is taking place. So value addition means that all the stakeholders in the value chain benefit. So that is our aim. Uh, and uh, we want everyone in the sector associated with the sector to thrive. And my best wishes and thanks to everyone who attended today's session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, uh, I will be, this will be incomplete if I don't thank our team members. Uh, Harpreet Singh, who has been working uh, this thing. Dr. Sudhanshu is our secretary, APIDA. Vinita, general manager. Uh, Man Prakash, deputy general manager. Uh, you can see Poonam. All my team members, I request, I request for my team to give a round of applause. Thank you very much. And we have a small souvenir to offer to our esteemed guest. Can I request my team members to first as I said, this initiative is Chairman Apida, so let's beginning felicitating Chairman Apida with this. Achha, tali itni thodi. And then I request team members to please felicitate uh, with the souvenir to Excise Commissioner Dr. Adarsh. Always available, readily available, a phone call away, Mr. Sanjeev Vich. Kabhi bhi parishan kar sakte hain, bula sakte hain, baat kar sakte hain, Shilpa Gupta. 
एंड शी मेक्स अ लवली प्रेजेंटेशन आई टेल यू शी इंद्री की इतनी अच्छी प्रेजेंटेशन शी डिड इन चाइना एवरीबडी अप्रिशिएटेड शरण और मोहन मेकिंग्स को दुनिया के कोने कोने तक ले जाने वाले हैं श्री मिस्टर अनिक खान और वाइन को दुनिया तक पहुंचाने वाले और हिंदुस्तान के अब और आगे बढ़ाने वाले मिस्टर अश्विन प्रेसिडेंट वाइन ग्रोवर्स एसोसिएशन एक दिन पहले फोन किया एंड रेडिली अवेलेबल थैंक यू वेरी मच शुभी मिश्रा well this will be incomplete if i don't felicitate tbci chairman please we our trade councillor from uh, vietnam so thank you very much once again because we have done it a meaningful within time disciplined way so we were there i re as chairman episar said we really apologize those who are standing outside we couldn't accommodate inside because of the limitation of the hall oh yes uh, so before we close then we say cheers so let's do cheers with the champion we have with us a new bottle 3 liter bottle which is there नहीं नहीं बस खोलना नहीं है खोलना नहीं है बस ओके थैंक यू